this is Rocker with the Walker. I just wanted to give a shout out to Angus Vieira, who subscribed. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Angus. You're awesome. And I haven't made a vid for a few days. There's been a lot of drama and stress at the homestead here, so... Um, there was an emergency surgery that had to be done on my roomie, and I just feel so bad for her because she's just been in so much pain and everything, and recovery is really hard sometimes when you have those kinds of things happen, and it's been really depressing around here because it's been so stressful. And it's not on her because she can't help that she was sick, you know, or she's sick. Um, it's just a lot of stress regarding, you know, taking care of the place and, and trying to meet out what needs to be done. And I am not the greatest at calmly giving out instructions and sometimes I can come off a bit short and I try really hard to pray for patience because um you know I need to be patient and compassionate and what's really strange is when I first got here I was um just kind of carefree and patient compassionate and since I have uh, went to the mainland, I was there for eight months and um, came back and it, it just seems like, and this happens a lot off grid, that like every day there's a new issue and it's very stressful and there is, uh, you know, no way around those things because everything off grid takes maintenance. And, you know, being disabled as I am, I can't always, you know, meet that everyday challenge. Um, it's really difficult sometimes and it makes my depression rocket, skyrocket. It's just, you know, um, well, any mental health issues that anybody has, it always makes their life a thousand times worse. So it's hard to find clarity when you're that stressed out. And, um, you know, I try really hard to be upbeat, but when you get down, you get down. It just is what it is, you know, and I did get on some medication at the doctors and hopefully that will help even things out a little bit. But again, that takes time as well. So it's a long road when you're dealing with those issues and especially in a high stress environment as it is here. And um, you know, I'm retired. I've been retired since I was age 19. This isn't some sob story. This is just the way it is. And, um, having to deal with that on top of adjusting to the lifestyle here is problematic. And, you know, I want my channel to be helpful to people and also helpful to myself because, you know, I just feel quite a bit alone, um, isolated because we live, you know, in a neighborhood of acres, basically. Um, you know, everybody in this neighborhood has usually an acre property. And it's far away from, it's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to a small gas station mini mart. And you can get, you know, 
some basics but if you want you know a burger and fries or something you know you have to travel quite a distance to go for that and i don't drive so i have to rely on you know people with vehicles and we do have vehicles here on the property but they're not mine and you know it I feel like I'm bothering people if I'm asking for a ride here, there, or wherever. So every day is a challenge. And how I meet that challenge is, you know, what I'm trying to convey in these videos. I know that I am not the greatest orator and I have a lot to learn, but I do have a voice and I do have an opinion and I just hope that my struggles may help someone else who comes here to Hawaii and has pie in the sky dreams about what paradise is to them and then get here and realize that it's an awful lot of hard work. And unless you're a gajillionaire, you know, it's can be a struggle. And I just really want to impart that, those struggles, because I don't want someone else coming here and having to go through the things that I've had to go through. You know, every time you move to a different state, of course, you're going to have adjustment issues. But I've been here since November of 2020, and it seems like every day is an adjustment. It's, you know, very different from, you know, the mainland, you know, because it is so far away from the mainland. You know, it, things do not work. The, the infrastructure is very different than on the mainland, you know. I, Someone told me it's about 25 years behind in, in some ways. It's not as progressive, even though it's 2022. And I was shocked uh, by that because this is the digital age. And you would think that, you know, they would want to be on the forefront of their infrastructure. And it just isn't. It just isn't. I mean... I need a lot of help in, you know, medically wise, and the systems are very antiquated. I just have never been in a situation like this where, you know, even just getting an appointment to a specialist could be months out. Um, and I, you know, I need to see specialists. I have multiple issues and that is also frustrating so I mean that and then like shopping you're not going to find a plethora of conveniences in these outlying areas you know there is like two restaurants that's it oh wait three and then there's a couple of like cafe type situations. There's like a coffee meal kind of place where you can go hang out. Um, but, you know, it is nothing like what I'm used to. You know, I'm used to, even though we live far away, you know, uh, whatever I needed was, you know, maybe a half hour away. And if I wanted to go, you know, into a bigger town that was about an hour away. So I'm used to that isolation. But what I'm not used to is going those distances and maybe not having the amenities that I, I need or that I, you know, want. And, you know, it's really hard <clears throat> to adapt to that. On this side of the island, you know, it's we're on the Hilo side of the island. So 
it's more local, it's more village type scenarios. Whereas on the Kona side, the more tourist side of the island, those amenities are at your fingertips. You know, you can go to, uh, you know, multiple grocery stores. You can go to multiple restaurants. You can go to white sand beaches, which is, you know, the paradise feel of Hawaii, where on this side they have black sand beaches because it's all volcanic rock. And, you know, that's hard. That's different. Um, just going to the beach, I do wear a walking boot on one foot that's permanent. And my walker is not going to adjust for sand. So even just going to the beach is troublesome. And, you know, sometimes you have to walk quite a distance and dragging a boot it's just not you, you just can't do it so even here if you go into Hilo there's quite a few beaches that you can go to it's just that for myself it's very hard to get there um, not necessarily like driving there that's that's an easy part but, or getting a ride there, I should say. But it is definitely difficult to actually get to the beach because you have to walk a long distance. And for myself, that sometimes is not a thing I can do. So when I first got here, we would drive down to all of those places and, you know, hang out and, uh, you know, be able to be in that environment more readily, more easily. But, you know, as time has gone by, those things are not as often and going to the beach is a chore for me. You know, um, is my walker going to be able to, you know, go over the terrain? Am I going to get stuck somewhere? Am I going to fall because there's holes, rocks, roots, everything kind of in the way? You know, and what if I get hurt? You know, and that'll just multiply my problems. So don't really go to the beach that often and I don't know the nightlife in Hilo is it popping I have no idea because I rarely go to Hilo at night and that's the biggest town around here so it's the biggest city around here and it's about 30 miles from where we live which you would think oh it's not that far but if you don't drive, it is that far. Um, the buses are free right now because of, you know, the pandemic. And it's great that people have that relief. But I can't take the bus. Um, it's way too stressful, I feel. So that isn't an option for me. A lot of people utilize the bus system. But... It only travels at certain times to where we live. And it may not come close enough to where I live on, the, on our road to even be usable. And I, can, I cannot walk that far at all. Just coming down the stairs of my tent right there and coming to this area where I'm sitting right now is sometimes a struggle and I have to take a rest you know um it's it can be very difficult so all of these things combined make you depressed it just does um not maybe a normal person that doesn't have clinical depression but you know 
And, you know, people are like, look on the bright side. Look where you live. And I'm all like, I know exactly where I live. And I've tried to look on the bright side. But it's hard when you're sad and when you're lonely. You know, I'm in a, a state where I've only lived, you know, just a bit, you know, over two, maybe un, a little bit under two years. And I know a handful of people, and I only know uh, three people here that I've known for more than, you know, 15 years. And, you know, my one roomie, that's why I moved here, because I knew her, and I trust her, and I know that this was the right decision, but it is a struggle, Especially when you come from the mainland, and I lived in Washington State for 41 years. So I know Washington State like the back of my hand. I've lived in western Washington, eastern Washington. I've lived at one end of I-5 to the other end of I-5 in Washington State. You know, I've lived all over those areas. And so, you know, I'm not going to get lost ever in Washington. You know, uh, I know where all the mountains are. I know where all the rivers are. I know where the lakes are. And here, it's alien territory, you know. The Hawaiian alphabet only has 17 letters, okay? So all the words are a lot of vowels, and they're hard to pronounce. And, of course, you know, I, as a not a linguist, I have no idea sometimes how to pronounce things and you do feel alienated just by that just by that and I didn't expect those kind of things when I moved to a new state you know if you move to like Wyoming you're gonna have to you know figure out all the shortcuts and you know figure out you know what this store is called compared to the state you come from but when none of the stores are anything that you've ever encountered before, it is alien. Um, they do have a Safeway in Hilo, and that's like I'm no, I know I can get whatever I need at Safeway, but not always. You know, it isn't it isn't like it is on the mainland. They might, if they run out of something, it's gone. Like cat food has been. Uh, missing from shelves as soon as it comes in it gets bought up and you could go into the store and the entire cat food shelves will be empty and I've just never ever lived in a place where those kind of things are around I, ne I never have lived somewhere and I lived in Alaska for six years when I was uh, quite young and there, their infrastructure is spot on. So, you know, they have everything you need, even though you might be in, you know, five feet of snow. And, you know, everybody knows how to drive. You know, you know where everything is. It's, it's very easy to navigate. You know, if you live in a big city, if you live out in the bush in Alaska, you're screwed. Uh, you're not you're not getting supplies for quite a while. You may have to travel a great distance um, to get your supplies. And here, crazily enough, it's so small, but yet it's so vast when it's not anything that you've ever been around. So, I mean, there's just all these challenges that I'm dealing with, and I guess we could call this the challenges video. I don't know. Um, I will try really hard to have more patience, be more compassionate, be more willing to adapt to my situation. And I just have to muddle through because, you know, who am I going to talk to about it? Um, even though there's new people coming all the time, I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, it's hard to get to know people. And pe some people can be, although very, very friendly, some people can be very standoffish, set in their ways. 
And a lot of people come to Hawaii and they want to change things. I don't want to change things. I want things to improve. That's different than changing things. You know, a lot of people are like, hey, if you don't like it here, you know, go back to where you came from. And I'm like, but this is where I'm from now. Um, this is where I live. This is where I'm going to live, you know, for the rest of my days. So that isn't an option to go back to where I came from. That is a, a you know, something a lot of people might say if you come here and it isn't what you thought and you want, you know, you complain. I complain a lot and I just have to take a step back and assess each situation as it comes and try to find the brighter side of things. So that's what I'm going to work on and try to adapt a little better. And that way I can help other people that might be coming to the, you know, tropics, the islands, and the issues that can come up hourly sometimes, you know, like right now, our catchment, which is 10,000 gallons, only has a foot of water in it. And a good friend of ours is loaning us an IBC container, which are those, it's about 300 gallons, a uh, plastic, heavy plastic, heavy duty plastic container with a, like a metal cage around it. And a lot of people do use those for water on their properties. But luckily on our property, we have this 10,000 gallon catchment. But if it doesn't rain, which it hasn't for days and days, eventually that catchment water is going to be low, which is where it is now. And it's hard. The, it won't run the pump to flush the toilet, so you have to put in a bucket of water into the toilet to make it gravity feed drain um, to flush. You can't take a shower as long as you need a shower. You basically wet down, turn the shower off, soap up, wash your hair, condition your hair, whatever. Um, and then turn the water back on, and as a disabled person who has to be seated in the tub, a shower takes about 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, and when you can't utilize the water to be able to, that is sufficient for that, it, it's really stressful. It is really stressful. And then we can't do laundry in the, la in the washer because... You know, we have to really ration our water. And, you know, if you're going to do dishes, you do one sink full of dishes a day. And, I mean, you would say, well, water is free here. You already showed us a video of that. But the gas to go get that water isn't free. And gas prices are really high here. And so it does add up. So... You know, and we have to go every two or three days to get drinking water. And uh, those four or five containers are not going to fill the catchment. They're just not going to. So we're getting this 300-gallon uh, uh, IBC container, and then we'll siphon it into the catchment. But we may have to do that four, five, six, seven, eight, ten times to fill it to a capacity where, you know, it's usable for everything that we need to do here on the property. And it's challenging as heck. It's stressful as heck. And a lot of people are going through that issue because it's, it's kind of like the dry season here. And the wet season starts in October. So that's promising because that's right around the corner right but it's still you know a couple weeks away and so in that time 
it's probably not going to rain that much. I think it rained yesterday for like 10 minutes and then it rained for five minutes. So it, it's just not enough rain. So we have to do what we got to do. And to get, you can get 4,000 gallons of water delivered, but it's $325 and you know we just don't have it right now and there is this thinking in your brain that you're going to get water delivered and then it's going to there's going to be a deluge the next day so you you really got to think about if we're not you're going to get if you have the funds available that you're going to you know be able to get the water delivered and then it what it's gonna rain hella and then you're like well there was three hundred twenty five dollars we could have you know spent on something else so we decided that we're just not gonna do the water delivery and we're gonna do the IBC container and try to just deal with it because you don't have a choice no there's no magic answer so you know, this is what I'm talking about. It's all like, you think everything's good to go, and then your catchment is, you know, super low, and now you have four systems that you can't utilize. You know, you can't use, utilize the kitchen the right way. You can't utilize the laundry the right way. You can't utilize the bathroom the right way, the toilet the right way. So, you know... <clears throat> and then all of those things put stress on the pumps, the batteries, everything. So, you know, even if you have systems in place, something like that will come and mess that whole system up. So, you know, luckily our good friend is giving us that container because I don't know what we would have had to do, you know, um, have a garage sale maybe and well we don't have a garage but have a yard sale maybe and drum up some money or whatever to get a delivery and even then it might be a couple weeks out because so many other people need deliveries so yeah challenges 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 and I just I want to thank y'all um for you know liking the content that I put out, um, and sub my 24 subscribers, you have no idea, but you make this all worth it. Because if, if something I say can help one person, then it's worth doing. And even if I am so random, right, and have all these weird, uh, other videos, in you know what I put out there you just kind of have to deal with it I guess or not deal with it if you don't care for it of course you're going to go on to a different you know channel if you're digging it then totally you know do the like subscribe view comment let me know uh if there's something that I should talk about or something that you would rather hear about and I would try to make that happen um, golly thanks so much to everybody that's uh, been participating in this with me because isn't it what they say quote unquote teamwork makes the dream work I guess so thank you so much and aloha you have a really good day